Hi everyone and welcome to Johnny How To. In this video we're going to take a look at how we can not only create a garbage mat, which means we're going to get rid of all the extra areas of green screen or blue screen or whatever it is that you don't want to have in your shot, but also how to do that in a dynamic fashion. Now the typical way you might do a garbage mat is that you would go ahead and select your footage and I can see this is HD 10A so let me go ahead and set up my project settings for that so I'll press S for settings and my full size format just so my project is set up for that my comp I'm going to choose HD 1080 and so now when I create a roto shape I press O for roto it's going to default to that size and so if I go and press spacebar to maximize my view here what you might typically do in After Effects or Nuke or Fusion or whatever it is to create a garbage mat is you might go around and you don't get too close because this is a garbage mat. We just want to get rid of all this extra area and you would just go through and do a basic mat. Now around areas like this, like this pole, you would have to zoom in and really have to go really closely around this footage to really get it nice and clean. But the rest of it, you can just kind of rush around and not be too specific because remember the whole goal of shooting against a green screen and blue screen is that it's going to take care and keep those nice edges for you. Now I might be going a little bit too fast here but I don't want to get it like close like this because again why did I shoot against a green screen and blue screen in the first place then? You can do this this way with a roto shape and if you go ahead and do a in node after this I'll go ahead and do an in so a is kept inside of B. Now all I have left is just these areas and I don't have to worry about keying out or getting rid of the green screen out of any of these areas outside here. But the downside is if I jump forward, let's say 10 frames, well, they moved a little bit, not that much. That still works for the most part. We're getting close and cutting off a little bit of the beanie here with Eddie and we're getting a little bit close here with the, the shirt. But as the shot goes on, as you can imagine, they're gonna go in and out of those areas in ways we don't actually want. So what we're gonna try and do this time around is instead of having to manually do a garbage mat, we're gonna try and create a more dynamic version of that. So with that being the case, I'm gonna go and delete my roto shape and I'll go and delete my end node. And what we're going to do is start off with, and I'm gonna use a primat node, it doesn't matter if you use a primat node, I'm just gonna use a here that I think I can get the result really quickly. So let me go ahead and go back to a frame where I see him on uh, Robert on screen for the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and do a primat node. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the foreground into the primat node. And just to try and get a quick dirty key, I'm gonna go ahead and click on auto compute right here. And that's gonna try and do its best to auto compute what a key should look like. And if I go and select this and press one to view the result, and view the alpha channel, you can see it hasn't done a great job. It hasn't gotten rid of all the background and it still has some transparency in the foreground characters, but it's gotten me started. And so now I can go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna clean my foreground noise. I'll go ahead and turn down or uh, bump down my luminance for my viewer. I'll go full screen. And this is just going to be a really grungy, non-clean key. The goal is I wanna make the background completely black and make the foreground or the characters in this case completely white. So with my clean foreground noise selected, I'm gonna go ahead and just control down control and shift. And I'm just gonna select and drag a box over these pixels to push them towards white. The only area I'm gonna be a little bit diff uh, careful with is around his hair because certain parts of his hair might be transparent but when I'm looking at it in this blocky form, I might not think so. So I might not push it around there quite as much, but obviously we shouldn't be seeing through here or here unless there was a very strong reflection on his glasses. I should check for that. But overall, I'm gonna get this to be a solid white foreground and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'll pump up the luminance brighter for the viewer this time. I'm gonna do the same thing for the background. So in the drop down here for the prime app, under operation, I'm gonna choose clean background noise I'll go full screen again in the viewer. And I'm gonna go into control, shift, left click and drag, and try and push the background to black or very, very close to black. And you don't wanna try and have too many little areas left over because we're gonna use an extra step that might magnify those. Um, so for the most part, you wanna try and get it completely black and white. And again, this would be a horrible looking key because we're getting rid of all the nice hair detail as we're going along. So just as an example of why you wouldn't wanna do this as a final shot, uh, if I look at the hair detail for Robert here, and then I go ahead, let's go ahead and zoom in here a bit. 
and I view the original. So I'll go and press two to view that in another viewer. You can see that I'm losing all the strands of hair over here. And I'm losing detail here. So it doesn't look absolutely horrible, but definitely we're losing more than we want. And to actually just to make that easier to see, I'm gonna go ahead and just in this Primac here, I'll plug in the background node with a green color that I've made the same green as this area over here. And the Primat node, I'll go ahead and set it to output composite, view this, and then I'll view the original. You can kind of see if I go full screen and do a wipe. You can see as I kind of dissolve between these two that I'm losing detail here and I'm losing detail over here. And that just, if you lose that, it just makes it look more like you cut them out with a pair of scissors and put them on a new background. It just doesn't look realistic. And you can see I'm losing kind of some definition or some softness along the edge of his shirt as well. We're not gonna use this as an actual key. We're gonna use this as just an aid to help us get going a little bit more quickly. We have our really kind of, I you just considered a bad key, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And over here in the node tab, I'm gonna call this a, uh, harsh key. Just so I know that this is not going to be used for anything other than an inner key and an outer key. So I'm going to go ahead and create a animated garbage mat now by going ahead and using this as my base. And I want to grow this out to where it goes outside their edges. So where I had a roto shape that I drew around the outside every 10 frames or however often I needed to. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do this automated by using a erode filter, a filter erode. So I'm gonna select my primat, press tab and type erode, and you can see there's erode filter. And once I have this selected, all I want to adjust here for channels is the alpha channel. So where it says channels none, I'm gonna change this to alpha. And once I start to use the slider, you can see it's either going to shrink in my mat or grow it outwards. And in this case, I want to since I want it to be an animated garbage mat, I want to grow it outward, so I'm going to go ahead and put a negative value in there. Now, how far you need to go depends on, on your edges. So in this case, I want to make sure I'm not cutting off any of the hair or anything like that. So I'll just go as far as I feel like I need to do. And in the next step, I'll test to see if I went far enough. So basically, I've gone from here to here. So I've created a little bit of a garbage mat. But the cool thing is, is if I play this back, you can see frame by frame, this is animating for me. Now the downside is you can see there's some kind of jumpy pixels out here and that is because if I view my primat and zoom in here and brighten up my viewer, these are these little remnant pixels that were left over from the background. So either I need to go back to my primat and say clean background noise and control shift and drag uh, over these to get rid of them or if I just can't get rid of all of them, the one other thing you could do, and let me go and see how this looks now. So Starting to get there, I can go and be viewing here and still be adjusting my primat so I can control left click and drag, start to get rid of those that way. But if you feel like you just can't get rid of all those, another thing you can do is this is the node where we grew our mat outwards. What you can do to get rid of just these little itty bitty leftover parts is before this one, I'll select my primat. I'm going to add another erode filter. So I'll call this my shrink mat. And I'll call this just dynamic garbage or GMAT. So just so I know what each one's doing, if I'm going back and I need to adjust these later on. So basically, if I look at this, let's go and view our final results. And this is actually already taking care of it. So in my shrink mat here, that is up here, right here, you can see the size is set to one. If I go ahead and disable this, you can see I have these left over these spots. Now I'll go and disable my other one as well. So I'll go and view this, pump up the gamma or the luminance, and you can't really see those spots, right? They're hard to see. But if we do start growing them outwards, we see that those pixels are still left over. So basically what this does, if I have this at anything other than a value of zero in a positive way, in a positive direction, it's going to shrink down or erode away those pixels. And you can see it affects my overall result, because basically what it's doing before this step, it's shrinking in enough just to where I'm getting rid of those last little teeny tiny pixels that are left. And now that those are gone, I can go ahead and re-enable and use my filter where I grew out the mat 
and that way now I don't have those little dots left over. So in this case, now I have an animated mat, I don't have any of those little spots left over, the pixels from the background, and we have this animated over time and we didn't have to do any manual roto. The last little bit to this in this particular shot that we wouldn't be able to do automatically is that we do have the bar or the rod or whatever it is they have right here that would need to be taken and rotoed out manually. So basically what I would need to do is I would need to do a roto shape and get in here and do some articulate roto, meaning I'm going along the edges perfectly. And I would have to animate this over time. But I only need to do it for that small area and probably this guy's arm out here as well. And I would just exclude that from my result. So here is my mat here. And I would go ahead and say, okay, I want to keep everything that is outside of this area right here. So A is outside of B. And so now I know I don't have to worry about those areas right there. So what this basically does for us, and hopefully uh, you can kind of think forward as far as what this is going to help us do, is if I have my shot now and I start to do a key on it. I'm not going to do a, a final key here right now, but if I go ahead and do a key light node, let's say for instance, and this whole section right here, and remember I would need to key this, so uh, I'll maybe make a note for myself, needs keying. I'll go ahead and drag around this and I'll press tab and go down to backdrop. And I'll just say this is my dynamic garbage map. And so I know I have this on the side here. And in my key light, I'll go ahead and plug this into my original footage. I'm just going to do a key for Robert's upper head, maybe even just the screen right side. So I'll call this head key screen right. And just so I have these labeled. And there's basically two ways you can use this. One is that before I even start my keying, I can use an end node and attach that below this guy right here. So I have my key light. I'm saying I want to keep A, which is my key light, inside of B. So I only want to keep what's inside those shapes that I have, this white mat that I have right here. So I've gone from having the entire green screen right here to now all I have to worry about after I have this end node, so I just have to worry about these little lines right here. So I don't have to worry about getting this towards transparent or this or this or anything like that. There's a little bit more I would need to garbage mat out, but for the most part, you can see how much time it's going to save us and not just for the single frame, but it's going to update over time frame by frame. Now, if I go through and I do see that, okay, I'm losing some strands of hair like I am right here, I might need to go back and adjust how far out my mat is, so I don't want to lose any of that hair detail, so I want to make sure I'm not losing anything that is important. But that's the basic idea, and you can see that my articulate roto, even though I'm a few frames off now, is taking care of that pole that otherwise would be in the shot still. So that's kind of the idea of that, and now if I go ahead and go through and use my key lights, and I'll select my background color, which in this case is going to be the green screen right here. I'll get close to his hair, but not actually on it. So I'll do, do control alt and left click and view my alpha channel. I can see I still have a little bit of gunk left over on the screen. Remember, I'm just doing this for the screen right section. And actually, this is doing a pretty good job for over here as well. If I pump this up, you can see there's more to get rid of. So my job isn't done, but starting off from here versus starting off from here, that's a big difference. So I, I, um, instead of having to start like this, I'm starting with just this. So that is how you can create a dynamic garbage mat inside of Nuke and the same properties or the same uh, ideology carries over into Fusion and After Effects as well. The effects and the nodes are a little bit named differently, but it's the same thing and maybe I'll put together some tutorials for that as well. So hopefully you can find this very helpful. It can definitely be a huge time saver. Go ahead and integrate this into your workflow, and I'll see you on the next Johnny How-To.